Alex? Yes. Um, I'll do the briefing in just a minute. Do you mind if I have the office? Yeah. 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 The first question that people ask about this place is how many people are even here? 11. 11, that's me. 12, Jack. You can have it. All right. <clears throat> <coughs> so it's this time again. We first started the census in about mid-February uh, when we took the government to court because they were threatening to evict the southern part of the camp and they estimated officially that only 800 to 1,000 people lived there. We actually found that 3,500 people lived there. We were in a meeting yesterday uh, about um, registering unaccompanied children uh, for the potential resettlement to the UK. So this census probably counts and is more important than any other one before. We marked every house with a code according to the sector they were in, the type of shelter it was. It takes about four days to do the whole data collection. Um, any more than that, we feel that it, it would render the results invalid and probably unreliable. But at the same time, if we do it the way that the authorities do, which is in four hours, that would not really be representative of the people there. The first question that we actually ask the people is, how many people sleep here? They send in police, they, the police knock on doors, and people remember the last time that that happened. And the last time that happened, police knocked on doors and they lost their homes. We send out volunteers who've been here quite a while. And we have translators who actually help get the message across accurately. We ask where they're from, um, how many men, women and children? Four people. One woman and three men. Anybody is underage? If you encounter any children, you absolutely must take their ages. Uh, and you must uh, find out if they're there with family. So A for adult, M for minor, or UAM for unaccompanied minor. We're just discovering patterns of population that no one's really seen or measured before. As we're going around to people's houses, there are hundreds of children here that we don't see. Safeguarding children is everyone's responsibility. If we were at home in the UK, we would all be we encouraged to do this, and everybody here treats the residents in this camp with the same professionalism at home. How old is Salman? Fifteen. One month in Europe. We just found there's 11 unaccompanied minors in this shelter. Um, and Michael works for the youth centre so he can now get their details and he knows they're here. Last month we did it and there were like about 60 newly arrived unaccompanied minors within a month. So Annie went online and just searched, you know, what, searched sort of any reasons um, that there might be a sudden influx of unaccompanied minors from Oromia and it turned out that in November last year there was a sort of government attack on a school in Oromia. We are finding a lot of under 18 year olds who have arrived since we did the last census. If you're not asking the question, why are 56 children from one community living here without any parents, then we're not really doing justice to this crisis. Right, we need to get more paint, don't we? Everything that you take down will go to a team that will address as much as possible the need that you find. Um, so please make sure to fill this in very, very accurately as much as you can. You had a job in, in uh, Oromia, a student, and you were away? Two months ago we found that from a sample of 26% of people who answered this question, we found 55 different occupations and professions. These people here are not just a refugee. Farmers and students and you know architects and professors and doctors and lawyers. So it's really important to, if we use that information, to counter the myth that they're all economic migrants, they're all for benefits, la di da. It really starts to reshape that narrative that, that people have come here to, to take, when in reality these are people who have given all their lives and are now coming here to resettle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. They're typing up the census, which is not the most exciting job in the world. So now we have about three days of processing. What else do you need? Um, vulnerability. Uh, it's her and three young children and her husband. She sleeps with Salam and her husband sleeps in his friend's shelter. I cook while they type, then we eat, then we type a bit more, then we stop, then we drink. Do you love it when you're doing the census? Um, <laughs> They don't understand when you say man, like you all men, you all yeah. man, and then you like, no, and then you're like, no women, no women. like, ah, no, no women, <laughs> no women. 
But we need, we need women. Yeah. We need good you could, <laughs> vul <laughs> vulnerabilities needs wife. Bye. Um, thank you. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. My sort of area of expertise is human rights and advocacy. So it's good that I understand the context of the situation. But no, I'm not a statistician. I'm I'm just a nerd who's lucky that I got to, you know, put that to good use. So the total number of people is 7,037. There are 761 children, and the youngest one is four months old, and 608 um, unaccompanied minors, um, the youngest one of which is eight years old. Because the number we're finding is so much higher than what we expected, and definitely what the authorities wanted, um, we thought it might actually prompt them to get rid of the camp. That's not happened. Um, I think possibly because they're starting to realize that these numbers are correct. We really didn't expect the number to go over 7,000 because it was the month of Ramadan and people don't tend to travel as much. So if this month it's grown by, I think it was 1,400, then next month, God knows, because now the Ramadan's over, people will start traveling again. So they accept the fact that the population is growing and will be growing for quite a long time. And if that just leads to them finding more solutions